For this video, we're going to be using this Greenlight 1968 Ford F100 short bed pickup truck. I'm going to be building this into a desert race truck or a Baja style truck. And one of the common characteristics with those trucks is that they only run the outer bed sides or fiberglass replacement bed sides to save weight and they don't really necessarily need the bed floor. So they just get rid of it to make it easier to connect the uh, roll cage to the frame and throw whatever spares and fuel tank they need back there. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is to uh, disassemble this truck and uh, cut the bed in half. So here's the truck all disassembled, and yes, you did hear me right, I said cut the bed in half. I just cut it apart with a Dremel, because it doesn't really matter. All that we're really needing are these bed sides. And uh, we're not going to be actually taking apart the bed and using the existing uh, bed sides. We're going to be using these as a mold, and then we're going to use a vacuum forming machine to heat up and uh, form thin styrene plastic over the bed sides. So here's our vacuum forming machine. I picked this off of Amazon for, I think it was about a hundred bucks. I think this is used in dentist's office to make uh, molds of your teeth for retainers maybe. And uh, what it is, it's two main, well, three main components. You have your uh, hood right here, which has a heating element that uh, heats up the plastic that you put in the second element, this little tray that moves up and down. And then you have your third component, which is down here, which is a vacuum. So basically how this works is you put the hood over, you press the heat button, it heats up the plastic until it's fairly soft, and then you go ahead and you have your part down here, and you'll lower the tray onto your part and turn on your vacuum, and that'll suck the plastic over your part and make a mold of it. Uh, this is how soft RC bodies are made. Um, some of you that are older than me probably remember the Mattel had a vacuum forming machine uh, in the 60s and 70s, I believe. So some of you may have grown up with, uh, with that toy. This is just the closest equivalent we have for a cheap price these days. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our bed sides and we're going to put them on the tray here. Then we're going to go ahead and Press heat, that's going to be heating up the hood, put the hood over top of the plastic, and we're going to wait until it's soft. So this is actually my second or third attempt because uh, I tried molding the two pieces together and didn't quite turn out great, but uh, I molded one, turned out good, so this is going to be the second side. Make sure to take note if you are doing the pieces separate that you're using the two different sides and not the same side twice because then you'll have two left or right fenders. So as you see the plastic is molded so let's go ahead and Sorry you kinda gotta be quick here so uh, I meant to say that the plastic was melted and um, sagging so then you just go ahead and uh, put the tray down, you hit the uh, model button, and it'll turn on the uh, vacuum. So uh, there's our other side. Let's go ahead and uh, take it off and cut out the bed sides. Here's our first fender. This is our left fender, as it's been uh, cut from the sheet of plastic. I still have it attached to the bed. Uh, just a heads up. If you're using this plastic, which I'll uh, I'll put the size in the description, uh, it will come out extremely thin, like uh, tissue paper thin, if not thinner, and uh, it's very easy to break. So I would highly, highly recommend that you use a brand new sharp cutting knife, because uh, anything that's even the slightest bit dull, it could tear it. Um, it's kind of the uh, choice you have to make when you're vacuum forming. Uh, the thicker the plastic, the more rigid it'll be, but the less detail you'll get. So by using this thinner plastic, um, I am able to get more detail out of the bed, but it's going to be extremely fragile. So we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, pop it off the fender here so you can get a good look at it. There you go. Excuse my hand. 
And there is your driver side Ford fender. Uh, another heads up, if you are going to use thicker plastic, you will have to understand that the thickness of the plastic, you're going to have twice the thickness in extra size. So if you're using, I don't know, half a millimeter plastic, then you're going to have a piece that's a millimeter taller, millimeter longer, millimeter wider. So uh, by using this thick plastic or this thin plastic, you see that the body lines almost perfectly line up. You will not have that if you use thicker plastic. You can line up the bump on the side of this cab, but it's going to be a little too high and it's going to be a little too low. So just a heads up. So uh, there you go. That's how you can go ahead and make a uh, fender out of vacuum formed plastic. Um, there's plenty of different uses for this kind of thing to justify the. I wonder if you can hear my neighbor peeling out. Um, to justify spending $100 on a piece of equipment like this, you can use it for fenders, which. Uh, I know not everyone's going to be making, um, you know, desert race trucks, but uh, this would be great for making uh, junkyard panels. Um, you don't even have to cut the fender out of the car, which can take sometimes an hour. You just mold it over the car and cut out the fender that you want. Uh, you can make dragster bodies using this. Um, I mean, you could, there's countless, uh, you can even make your own parts. So if you want to go ahead and take a, um, uh, a bench seat out of a car and you can mold over the bench seat and you can use that mold multiple times uh, So it'll help you save parts you uh, I bet you could even do this with wheels where you can actually use this as a mold for uh, resin casting your own wheels So uh, I think there's enough um, Opportunities and different uh, things you could do with this piece of uh, Equipment to justify the cost. I mean a hundred dollars I understand it's a lot to some people, but uh, in the world of uh, laser cutting and 3D printing and hundreds and hundreds of maybe even thousands of dollars tools, a hundred dollar tool that lets you make your own parts really isn't that bad in my opinion. Uh, I understand if it's not to some others, and uh, this is just a video to give you some new ideas for your model building and... Uh, a little instructional video. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and uh, have fun building.